Hello everyone and welcome to another one of my impromptu videos. Uh, today I wanted to do something kind of special. Um, I should have done this on a Thursday, but um, I wanted to actually put together a Thor action figure collection video and uh, showcasing all the different Thor figures that I own. And um, you know, I don't own every single Thor action figure out there, but I thought I own, you know, enough to make a pretty neat collection video of the character. So. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pan over and let you guys go ahead and take a look at these. We're gonna break these. Uh, we're gonna break this video down and you know go over every single figure briefly. We're not gonna do a full-on review. Uh, we're just kind of gonna you know talk about the figure a little bit, what they mean to me, if there's a story behind it and whatnot. Um, just a little uh, background on my um, affinity for Thor. Thor has always been my favorite character for as long as I've been a serious collector and a serious comic book fan. Um, as a kid, I didn't really know too much about him. Um, he, I've seen him pop up in a couple of video games and you know comic books and whatnot. But it wasn't until I got into college where I started really you know collecting comic books as an actual collector and reading that Thor stood out to me. Um, for what it's worth, I am a I'm a heavy metal musician. I play in a heavy metal band, and I've always been a heavy metal fan. And to me, uh, Thor has just always been kind of like the metalhead's superhero. And he, he's not technically a superhero; he is in the terms of comic books, but he's a god, of course, right? But just something about Thor, you know, the big, strong, long-haired dude with the hammer of the gods and summoning lightning and summoning thunder. And, you know, there was just something about him that just appealed to me so much. He was big, he was loud, he was noble, he came from the golden realm of Asgard. And there was just something so cool about him that, you know, gravitated me towards him. So, Thor is my favorite character. Um, as you can see here, I do have you know, uh, somewhat of an extensive collection. I don't have every single figure here, I'll reiterate that again. Um, but I can say that I do have every single Marvel Legends store, um, and I do have them all displayed right here. With the exception of one, and I'll, I'll just say this right now, the only Marvel Legends store I do not own is the re-release of this King Rune Thor right here. Um, this is the Blob series store, we'll get into that a little bit more. But um, yeah, that's the only figure I don't have. But let's go ahead and break this down. We're going to go ahead and clear this table. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about these figures. Uh, kind of one by one. We'll group them all off together. And let's do a Thor action figure collection video. Alright, let's do it. By the beard of Odin. Have at thee. Boom, and here we go. Now, I figure the ones that people will want to see most and be most interested in are the 6-inch articulated figures, i.e. Marvel Legends, maybe Marvel Select, and so forth. Um, one disclaimer off the bat, unfortunately, I don't have any import figures. I am not a fan of the SH Figuarts Thors. Um, so far, I know we've gotten um, a Figma... Thor from the first Avengers movie. We've also gotten, I believe it's a figure arts Thor from Age of Ultron. Uh, we've gotten a couple of the Ragnarok Thors. I think we got a, um, yeah, we got a figure arts Ragnarok Thor with the gladiator armor. And then uh, we also got a, um, uh, we've gotten two, we've gotten the Infinity War Thor and we've gotten the Endgame Thor in figure arts. Um, and then I think we're also getting um, a new uh, import Thor, if I'm not mistaken. But um, unfortunately, you guys, I, I'm not a fan of those import figures, and I can it, maybe I can make another video discussing that. But basically, the bottom line is that the prices are just astronomical. They are too small. The figures are more like a five-inch scale, and I like my Thor's big, mighty, <laughs> and most importantly, in scale with my Marvel Legends, which the figure arts are not. So. Uh, that being said, I don't have any import figures here to include in this in what I would call the six inch articulated figures. Uh, but what we have here are what I do have, of course, you know. Now, I do have every Marvel Legends store figure here, and we're going to go through them all. Uh, with the exception of one. There's just one I don't have. Um, and why not start off with the very first one ever made? So, right here, you guys. Here we have the Marvel Legends Series 3 Thor. Uh, this was, uh, of course, back in the Toy Biz days, and was a phenomenal figure for its time. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the older figures um, are out of date. They don't hold up in a current display, but they still have so much beauty to them. 
Um, there's so much, you could tell there's just so much love and care that went into these sculpts. Um, I think the articulation could be better on all of these figures, but hey, you know, this was early on um, in the Marvel Legends career, if you will. And uh, they were figuring things out, and they were they were doing things, you know, they were being inventive. So this here is the very first Marvel Legends store, came out in Series 3. Uh, there goes his hammer. Let me get that real quick. Hold on. All right, we got his hammer. We saved it. Um, I don't know what year this came out in. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. It looks like uh, if it can focus, 2005. So 2005 is when Marvel Legends Series 3 came out. So this was a phenomenal figure. Great sculpt. It just has a very, very realistic feel to it. And um, But yeah, Series 3, Marvel Legends Store. Very, very cool figure. Let's put that guy to the side for now. Um, I'm going to try to stand him up as we go on. Uh, continuing in consecutive, in chronological order, I should say, we have the Marvel Legends Giant Man series, Thor. Now, Marvel Legends has always had an issue with scaling Thor. He's, in, he's either too big, he's either too small, he's too thin, he's too thick, he's too hulking, whatever the size, whatever the case is with the size, you know, but that's always been an issue with Marvel Legends, even to this day, and um, except for this new one, this one here pretty much nails it. Um, but this guy, the main issue with him was he was too small. And unfortunately, I agree with that. That's very, very true. I liked this figure a lot more because he just has much more of a towering presence, much more mightier, and just much more bulkier, which is how I like my Thor. And I'm, I'm just going to give a minimal effort to try to stand this thing up. If he can't stand, he's laying down. So be it. Um, and uh, this figure is too small for most Marvel Legends, but he works well when coupled, you know, maybe like on a one-on-one -on -one fight with um, another character. I like facing him off with my, fittingly enough, face-off Hulk from Toy Biz. He works really well, but this is a prime example of, of uh, Marvel Legends stores being too small. But phenomenal figure, excellent figure, great articulation, and... Uh, you know, he, it, in my opinion, he's probably a better sculpt than this one. I mean, you guys can decide for yourself which one you think is better. But ultimately, they both do the job very, very well. And uh, yeah, those are our first Toy Biz Marvel Legends. Moving on, we go on to what many consider to be the Dark Ages of uh, Marvel Legends. Now, this is when, unfortunately, Marvel Legends were... Uh, lost to Toy Biz and Hasbro took over. Now Hasbro, for you newcomers out there, Hasbro was not the dominant <laughs> Marvel Legend action figure manufacturer that they are today. They've gone through some rough times. This figure is considered to be one of those rough times. But I love this figure. I love this design for Thor. Um, this is um, the Lord of Asgard uh, costume that he has, or armor I should say. Uh, this is a story where a, he, I guess in an alternate universe, or maybe not an alternate universe, but he basically becomes king of the world, he becomes king of Earth, but he's a cruel ruler, and he kills the Avengers, and you know, he just breaks bad, and it's a really badass story. Um, so, this is a pretty cool figure, uh, and then I did mention that there's only one Marvel Legend figure that I do not own, and that is the variant, or I guess the re-release, to this figure. This guy was re-released in the 2011 Thor movie series that came out in uh, Walmart exclusive. And um, this guy was re-released with a better paint job. I wish I had that figure, but I can't seem to find him for a good price. So this guy will do. Um, he has a pretty good size to him too. The hammer, sometimes the hammer is sculpted or even drawn in the comics to look like stone. Sometimes it's made to look like uh, metal, the Uru metal. This one here, along with uh, the first two that we talked about here, are made to look like stone and you can see this one is very much weathered and cracked um, and you know this is a much more darker Thor he's a pretty pretty much a tough guy so I mean when isn't he a tough guy but here we go this also came out in the uh, Hasbro blob series I should say I'm just gonna lay them down I'm not gonna bother with trying to stand them up again now moving on uh, we ended up getting in 2011 a pretty cool Comic-Con exclusive Thor. Now, this guy was released during the return of Marvel Legends wave. Um, for anybody who might not know, like I mentioned, we were going through a dark age of Marvel Legends. We weren't getting the best products in the world from Hasbro, you know, to be frank, 
but this figure, whoops, this figure represented what was known as the return of Marvel Legends. Marvel Legends were back, and they were going to start giving us the high quality figures that we expected from Toy Biz, you know, and um, this was just ultimately the figure that carried the flag for that resurgence. So this figure is the Comic-Con exclusive uh, Mighty Thor, and actually this is him in his uh, original box. This is a Sanio Comic-Con exclusive 2011. Very nice looking figure, looks very nice in the packaging. I've had this one for a while. Return of Marvel Legends. It's a fully functioning hammer and everything. Well, not functioning, of course, but, you know, it stays intact. So, pretty nice. And this is the one that I have loose. So, it's a very, very cool sculpt. I like this figure because he's very bulky, very towering over, you know, all the other characters. But the main issue with this guy was that he was too large. Uh, put him next to any of the Toy Biz Hulks, even some of the Hulks today, and he's just too large. But, you know, if posed right, if photographed right, he looks very, very well. I do like this mighty, broad-chested Thor. And uh, you could tell this one had a, uh, a lightning effect. He's definitely calling down the lightning. You can see the hammer has a um, detail to represent that. Um, he has a glistening lightning paint job on him all over the red is a uh, the cape is a very very vibrant red to represent the fact that he's summoning his lightning powers now a lot of people complain about this cape being too vibrant too red um, i think they maybe don't understand that this was supposed to be him calling down lightning and of course the cape you know everything about him is getting lit up by that effect so you know to me it makes sense to have that cape um be full on a bright red now in 2012 the year following that we got a re-release, a retail release, in Wave 1 of that aforementioned uh, Return of Marvel Legends. Now, this was a more neutral Thor uh, in the modern costume, uh, otherwise known as the Heroic Age costume. And this figure is just amazing, man. This was my favorite Thor for the longest time. I probably put this guy at number 2 um, as far as my favorite Thor figures of all time. This guy just, um, I mean, he, he, he's perfect. <laughs> I mean, maybe not perfect. He could use ankle pivot. He could use a better update in his articulation. But he just looks so incredible. This is the mighty Thor that, you know, um, is more representative of the Koi Pill artwork. And, um, but, you know, you can tell that, one, the cape is darker, but this is a more neutral paint job. And he just looks so mighty. I mean, how else can you put it? Uh, moving on, later on into the uh, Marvel Legends, we ended up getting this guy right here now it came with a sword uh oh there goes his head um i forget what he used this sword for in the comments i forget the origin of that sword but this rendition utilizes the same body mold as that other throw we just went through uh but this is the god of thunder armor i love love this armor this figure Especially from far away, he just it just feels like he glows, ironically, because he's primarily in black. But this is a very dark Thor, he's very, very tough looking. And, um, you know, you got the same hammer, the same legs, same torso, just different head, different arms, same cape. So, um, it's basically a re release, and I could understand why some people would consider him to be underwhelming. Maybe I'm biased because he's my favorite character, but you know, I just really love this figure, I love this suit. And um, it's based off of um, the God of Thunder run by Jason Aaron. And um, if you guys haven't um, checked out that run, I would absolutely highly recommend it. The writing by Jason Aaron, the artwork by Isad Ribic, if I'm saying that right. Um, it's God of it's the um, the God Butcher's the God Butcher storyline, as well as Malekith the Accursed. It's just such a dark, brutal. Uh, whoops, such a brutal storyline and it's just you know what that figure is based off of uh moving on now i'm i'm losing out on chronological order i'm trying to stay in chronological order but the next one we have here is an old thor this is an old king thor now unfortunately i don't have the appropriate arms that go with this figure um, this was also the, um, I should mention that this figure, well, this is a build a figure and this came in that way f to build this figure. Uh, but you had two options. You were able to build either Odin or an old King Thor, uh, with what you collected. Um, Odin came with a blue cape and of course a different head sculpt and different arms. These are the Odin arms. 
Um, and Odin, of course, came with a spear too. But unfortunately, um, some time ago, once upon a time, I sold the arms that um, are supposed to be included with the Thor. And I just have this guy displayed with his, you know, uh, Thor arms. He's supposed to have a metal arm because he loses his arm at some point. And he has his axe Yarnborn. Now, what I like to do with this figure is I like to take my Lord of Asgard Thor, take his hammer, and give it to this guy because um, it looks like a very weathered down, you know, hammer, like it's been around a while. And um, it just looks really cool. I think, um, you know, whenever I have this figure displayed, I have it displayed like this because. It just looks like, you know, an old, bitter king, mighty Thor, lord of a broken Asgard. And yeah, very, very cool figure. So this, uh, build a figure, right there. Uh, moving along, um, I'm not sure which one of these two came first. They came out around the same time. Here we have a young Thor. Very cool figure. Um, this is a reused body mold. And it's actually, let me pull out this guy as well, because it's actually just a repaint of this guy. I'll talk about these two guys at the same time, actually. So, I believe they came out around the same time. This is a Comic-Con exclusive um, Asgardian box set that we got. I forget what year. And then this was the um, Thor Ragnarok Gladiator Hulk Build-A-Figure series, Young Thor. Uh, otherwise known as, I guess they're both unworthy Thor, because this is before he has Mjolnir, this is after he has Mjolnir. Uh, very cool figure. It uses the same uh, sentry head sculpt that we got a little while back. Uh, but it does a job well. I have a lot of fun with this figure. Um, I have a lot of fun, you know, posing this guy, like maybe staring at a Mjolnir or, you know, battling a dragon or something. So I'm very happy to have a, a young adolescent Thor that's, you know, pillaging with the Vikings and whatnot. And I love the way the cape looks. The cape has a very weathered look to it. And, uh, yeah, this is just a young, rebellious Thor that, you know, we all know and love. So, yeah, young Thor. Later on in his life, he becomes unworthy. For those of you who don't know, um, maybe this might be a spoiler alert for maybe for those who haven't read it, but in the story, uh, Original Sin, uh, the Watcher is killed. And, um, remember, spoiler alert for the comic book Original Sin. You've been warned. Um, so, the Watcher gets murdered turns out that Nick Fury was the one who murdered him and uh, the Avengers have to battle Nick Fury and uh, there's a lot of other stuff that's revealed about Nick Fury in that story but basically Thor goes to battle Nick Fury and Nick Fury knows how to fight Thor he just goes up and whispers something into his ear and we don't know what he whispered into his ear for the longest time later on it turns out to be he's not worthy so that immediately Mjolnir just falls to the ground, Thor is no longer worthy, he falls to the ground and he's no longer able to wield Mjolnir, he's out of the fight, he's just entirely fixated on the fact that he cannot lift his mighty hammer anymore, and he just goes on this very long journey as being unworthy. So this is the unworthy Thor, once again wielding Yarnborn, very cool figure, and again, so, like I mentioned, Thor with Marvel Legends has always been, you know, just all over the place in terms of scale, this guy's kind of small. And um, I don't like it, but <laughs> he's in scale with more like the newer figures that are coming out. But um, what can I say? Phenomenal figure. A lot of fun to pose. Very good head sculpt. Um, just, you know, definitely a must-have if you're a Thor fan. You want to have an older, broken Thor where he's just not worthy anymore. Because as, you know, one of the themes of Thor is that at any point he could just not be worthy. Um, and then during this time, of course, while Thor is unworthy... Jane Foster becomes Thor. Now, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I want to include this figure because this is not a Thor Odin son, but it is a Thor figure. This is Jane Foster. This is the retail release, and um, I do also have the Comic-Con exclusive one. It's boxed up. It came in the same box set that uh, this guy came with, and um, I just don't want to pull her out right now, but it she basically comes with a lit-up Mjolnir. Slightly different paint job, but she's pretty cool. Um, this was an, also a story run by Focus, will you? Uh, by Jason Aaron. And I believe Koi Pill might be doing the art, I forget. But I picked up the first 10 issues of this, and it's really, really good. Um, but, you know, uh, it's, it only goes for so long. I, I, I like Thor Odinson, of course, you know, so. But not a bad figure. Very well made. Um, and then to wrap up the Marvel Legends stores. We're going to go with the most recent release, the Marvel 80th Anniversary Mighty Thor figure. My favorite 
Thor figure, my favorite Marvel legend, and arguably the best Thor 6 inch scale figure ever made. So, <laughs> I mean, that might spark up a lot of arguments, and that's fair, you know, but this is my favorite Thor figure, this is my favorite Marvel Legend figure, I love this guy. My only one complaint with him is that his chest is a bit too thin. Um, his chest should be a bit broader, uh, it's the Mighty Thor, so um, I wish he was a little bit thicker in the chest, but as far as, you know, everything else goes, this figure just nails it. He's uh, very poseable, the hammer is beautiful, you know, you got a very nice inscription there, um, and um, this figure just knocks it out of the park. I think they nailed it with the sizing on this figure. Like I said, the figures have just all, the Thor figures are just all over the place in terms of scale, and um, God, this figure is just its just spot on. He looks amazing. He's got a very realistic feel to it. Very fluid feel to him. And uh, I just have so much fun posing him. I have a couple of this guy. I have one new in the box. And I have a couple that I opened up. And um, yeah, I mean, this figure is just a must-have. If you're only going to have one Thor figure. If you're only going to get one Thor, this is the one to get. And he's readily available. You can go just about any store and you know, online store, of course, and you'll find him. He's all over eBay. He's not that expensive, but I'd highly recommend getting him now because he probably will be gone, you know, and he'll be very expensive. But uh, one thing I would love to see uh, Hasbro do is a re-release of this guy in the Retro Vintage series uh, because I would love to see this guy with the more classic colors. Uh, the classic colors being Jack Kirby's style of uh, art where... Instead of the black, this is a light blue, or I'm sorry, instead of the black, this is a dark blue, and uh, these discs are a, uh, a light blue, and of course the, uh, the red will be a very vibrant cape, um, and then this, these colors could stay the same, but, um, and when they do that as well, I'd love to get a, a separate head sculpt with the helmet off, but yeah, so this is the Thor Marvel Legends figures to get you guys, just for that, I'm going to leave him standing. As if he just took out everyone that came out before him. Um, and then we're going to talk about the uh, Marvel Select figures. So this was for the longest time my Marvel, uh, I'm sorry, my classic Thor um, until this guy came out. And you can see this guy utilizes the more classic look. You see the blue, the light blue and such, the vibrant cape. I'd very much love to see him re-released in this color scheme. And uh, this was a good figure. Terrible articulation. The head sculpt is, um, is it's flat. It looks like he just got punched in the face with his, hold on, focus. Yeah, it looked like he just got smacked in the face with his own hammer, you know? And, um, but still a great figure. Um, leaves a lot to be desired for the articulation. And then, uh, another great Marvel Select figure from Thor is, uh, for Thor, I mean, is the modern Thor. This is a great figure. Phenomenal, phenomenal sculpting, phenomenal paintwork. And, uh, yeah, man, this is a must. I, I don't want to say must get, but... If you only had this one, you'd be fine. This is an awesome figure. And then last but not least is probably another one of the best Marvel Thor figures ever made. I was going to say Marvel Legends, but this is a Marvel Select. Probably another one of the best Thors ever made. This is the Marvel Select Thor. Also based off the God of Thunder look, which is this suit. And this is just a superior Thor figure. I think this is a good way to end the 6-inch articulated comic book series uh, Thor figures, this guy is a must get. And he also comes with the best accessory any Thor has ever come with, the spinning hammer. How can you go wrong with that, you know? But yeah, so this is Marvel Select uh, God of Thunder Thor. <laughs> Moving forward, here we have the Marvel Legends MCU Chris Hemsworth Thor figures um, with some goodies in the background. Uh, continuing our 6-inch articulated figures for Thor. And uh, this is pretty neat. I've actually kind of always wanted to do this, but I've never done it before. You know, lining up all the MCU Thors um, from Marvel Legends, that is. This being the very first one that we got and the very first appearance of Thor in the MCU. All the way out to his last appearance in, uh, in Endgame. And um, so far, I mean, we're, we'll see. We'll see where he goes from there. Uh, we have Love and Thunder coming out pretty soon, and I'm pretty excited about that. Kind of. <laughs> anyway, let's get to this, shall we? So, way back in... I think this figure came out in 2010, actually. But 2011, Thor movie figure right here. Uh, very, very well done figure. Uh, this was back in... Uh, Marvel Legends were still going through a rough patch. And uh, there we go. 
during that time they were actually still able to produce some pretty cool figures and this is one of them those initial wave one i'm sorry uh phase one figures for the mcu were actually done pretty well and this figure was done very well also um he's got great articulation great sculpt um the paint could have been better i wish this was more of a chrome I'm having a hard time focusing here there we go um i wish this was more of a chrome it's too dark it's not exactly screen accurate but the head sculpt is nice mine unfortunately jesus there we go mine unfortunately has a little nick on the nose you know from falling on his face too many times but it's a great representation of the character the very first time we see him on screen and uh yeah just a very very well done figure still a lot to be desired a couple of issues with the articulation in the wrist and um but the head you know let me pop this off for you guys uh it is on a hinge which is my favorite joint on any figure um you know but he has a hard time looking up because of the hair but there's just so much you could do with this guy very very well made um and then again in 2012 in a walmart exclusive wave they used that same body mold to release a uh avengers store now while this is supposed to be representative representative of the avengers store um he still utilizes the same body mold as the first movie thor ergo this is not screen accurate this is more accurate to the first movie thor because the suit that he wears in avengers is slightly different from this one and when i go over my hot toy stores figures i'll i'll show you that because um it's ever so slightly different, but still different. And I would love to see an updated Marvel Legends store to represent that suit so that I could put him with my Avengers display uh, for the movie. But regardless, uh, so this is the exact same figure, you know, different paint job. The other one has a better paint job, but at least you get a head sculpt without the helmet here, which is more representative of how he looked in the film. So definitely a good figure. One of my favorites. It's, it's very well articulated and so fun to pose. So... Yeah, that's definitely a must-have for an MCU Thor collectionist. Let him be. Let him be. Why not, right? Uh, later on, we ended up getting this guy right here for the Age of Ultron appearance. Now, let me go ahead and also get this guy because this look uh, appeared both in The Dark World and Age of Ultron. So, these two figures here, if we can achieve a focus. There we go. Hold on. There we go. So these two figures came out at different times. Uh, this one here came out in a box set with uh, Bruce Banner, Black Widow, and uh, Hawkeye for the Age of Ultron movie. This one came out relatively recently. And um, this one is representative of the Dark World. Although he wears a similar suit in Age of Ultron. So both of these figures um, can be you know, used for either your Age of Ultron or Thor the Dark World um, figure. And they're both done very, very well. For the longest time, this was my favorite MCU figure. This one barely just takes it up because it's, it's, it's a little better made. It has a better paint job, but it depends on which one you prefer. Do you prefer you know, the, the sleeveless Thor or do you prefer the, uh, the heavier armored Thor? Either way, they're both great figures. Yep, lost another one. Either way, they're both great figures, and um, <laughs> bringing two figures up here is difficult to get the camera to focus, but they're both really well-made figures. Sound like a broken record. And uh, I think another must-get for a Thor collector. If you're only going to have one, this is the one to get. Or this one right here, because they're both great. And uh, in my opinion, this is one of the, either one of these two are the best look for Thor in the MCU. I think... In Thor The Dark World and Thor Age of Ultron, I'm, I'm sorry, Avengers Age of Ultron, he was sporting the best look that he had in the entire MCU. That's arguable, you know, it's my opinion, so. Um, moving forward, we have uh, Thor Ragnarok. Alright, I'm going to grab these two guys together again because they also use the same body mold. Uh, this guy right here, this is another very well-made figure. So, with this figure, this is when they started using the photorealistic printing uh, on the head sculpts. Which has honestly been kind of a hit or a miss with um, a lot of the figures. Whoops, there goes my camera. Um, oftentimes, it can come out kind of splotchy. And in this particular case, it comes out very nice. I very much get a sense that this is Chris Hemsworth as Thor and Ragnarok here. The previous head sculpts that we've gotten still look pretty good. Um, but obviously, you know, whoops, here we go. This one looks a lot better. Now, this one uses the same arms as the Age of Ultron Thor. 
And uh, while this one is my favorite look, along with the armored version, uh, this one, I think, um, arguably it's a better figure, primarily because of the head sculpt. If this one got a more photorealistic head sculpt, then this would by far be my favorite Thor figure. Um, for the MCU, that is. Uh, this guy does pretty well as good, as well. <laughs> this guy does pretty good as well. And, uh, yeah, just definitely a must-have, I would say. I might be saying that about all these figures because I'm a Thor fan. And then we got that same figure in a retail release. I guess I should specify that this guy came in the uh, two-pack with Valkyrie from the MCU. And then this guy came in the Ragnarok retail build a gladiator Hulk wave. Um, and uh, he also came with these two swords here, which are representative of the two swords that he got uh, in the arena battle. I wish we would have gotten him with the shield and that club that he was using. Uh, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Are we even beggars? I mean, we're paying for this, aren't we? I think we, we have a right to be picky. Um, this guy, unlike the other one, does come with the armor on his shin. And then, of course, you got the helmet. And he does come with the shoulder patch, which he sometimes wears outside of the arena. In the movie, he wears this sometimes, but luckily, it is removable. So if you really wanted to, you can just pry it right off. And if you ever got to put it back on, you can super, super glue it back on. So... Moving forward, those were our Ragnarok Thors. Uh, later on, we are into Infinity War. And this is a phenomenal figure too. Uh, not exactly screen accurate because I don't remember seeing the lightning bolt effect happening um, in the movie. I, I'm pretty sure we only saw this suit uh, just be completely black. So I've often considered you know, painting all this black for a more screen accurate look. But I, I can't bring myself to do that just yet. But... Uh, the head sculpt is nice. It's actually even better than the Ragnarok head sculpt. You can take a look right there. We'll just pan it over there. Um, he does feature the eye patch, of course. And uh, one of my favorite things to do with this figure, believe it or not. So, um, one of the few Marvel figures that I don't have for Thor is the Marvel Select Ultimate Thor. Now, you can see right here, I'm just going to show some pictures. You can see right here that the first movie for Thor... Uh, they took influence from both the Heroic Cage modern suit as well as the Ultimate Thor. And they kind of made a blend of them to create the movie Thor. Um, now, if to achieve this ultimate look for the MCU, what I like to do sometimes is... Um, so I'll take this body mold and I'll take the head sculpt from the first Avengers movie Thor. And I'll place it on this. And then with a Stormbreaker, you can have almost what looks like an MCU you know, Ultimate Thor. And I think this looks pretty good. The head fits on there pretty nicely. And I just thought this was pretty neat. I just thought I'd show you guys this. So, yeah. Um, you know, we'll get to those in a minute. But this almost passes for, like, an MCU Ultimate Thor. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, moving on. We're going to Infinity War again, you guys. So here we have Bring Me Thanos Thor. One of the best moments in the entire MCU. Wasn't it? Um, it's just a shame that... And maybe you'll argue you'll argue with me on this one, but it's just a shame that after Infinity War, Thor kind of went <laughs> in the MCU, unfortunately. But that's arguable, you know. There was still a lot to be loved in Endgame. We'll get to that in a second. But this figure was pretty nicely done. It utilizes where do you go? Here we go. It utilizes the same buck um, as this one right here, right? It does, right? I confused myself there for a second. Uh, with the added cape and, you know, the different arms and whatnot. Uh, I kind of feel like the chest should be a little bit broader on this one. But ultimately, it's not bad. But it's it's very well representative of that, you know, Thor, of that scene of Thor entering Wakanda with the most badass entrance of any Marvel character of all time. <laughs> and, uh, again, me being biased, but... Yeah, that was just such an epic scene, and I love this figure for that scene. Um, I'm more particular of a long-haired Thor, you know. For me, um, short hair, quippy, funny, scaredy cat Thor, um, I'm not a fan of. I don't think they needed to go that route whatsoever at all. Uh, but I'm a fan of the MCU. I've become a loyal fan, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on board. Even if you don't hit the nail on the head every single time, I'm still going to give them my faith because I've, you know, they've earned me. They've earned my faith. So, yeah, really, really good figure. Um, moving on, we got our last two MCU figures. Let's take a look at our fat Lebowski Thor. So, uh, this is a Build-A-Figure. 
um, came out recently in the Endgame wave, and it's a pretty nice looking figure. Um, the main issue with this guy is that he is very short. You look at more of a Thor in his prime. Uh, maybe you could argue that you know Thor got shorter as he got fatter in uh, a, a, in his depression with you know just drinking beer and all that. But you can see I got him here, you know, flat on their feet, and he's just much much shorter. But um, I don't think that's the case. I don't think he should be this short. But um, and again, I just was not a fan of the fat, scaredy cat, wimpy, uh, quippy, funny Thor. If you were, obviously that's cool. I was not, but um, this, regardless, is a pretty well-made figure. Uh, pretty fun to have, you know. Um, but he, he uh, yeah, he's just not my favorite in particular. So we'll leave him right there. And then this is kind of a kid bash. Uh, we have not received a screen accurate Thor in the final battle. So what I did was I just have a second one of it's literally another one of these figures right here for the Infinity War. And all I did was just take the alternate head sculpt that came with this guy because he came with two head sculpts he came with this one that has the uh the sunglasses on and then he came with this one too all i did was just pop it off place it onto this figure uh which nice it, it fits on there pretty nicely and then i just gave him the uh worthy cap mjolnir he came with his own stormbreaker of course and uh here we have a pretty good representation of the thor that we got in the uh battle against thanos and um, so, yeah, if they re if they release, you know, if Hasbro releases a, um, uh, I guess, a fat armored Thor, you know, for the final battle, I'll definitely get it. But I really like this look. Uh, I'm just not a fan of the uh, overweight, you know, Thor. I get it. They did it for laughs and a lot of people liked it. I was even laughing when I saw it in the movies. But once the hype came down, I realized I wish he was not like that. Anyway, moving forward. Speaking of, you know, alcoholic Thor... Whew. Uh, this is taking the wind out of me. Um, just got a couple of other figures back here to look at. This is Marvel Select Thor from 2011. This is representative of the first movie again. Um, unfortunately, mine is kind of damaged. The strap that was attached to the back of the hammer is gone, broken, lost forever in the midst of time. And um, yeah, this is a very, very well-made figure. Um, I sometimes prefer it to my... Whoa, where does head go? <laughs> One second, one second here. Um, I sometimes prefer it to, you know, the Marvel Legends version. So these two are both representative of the same look, the same armor. Um, they're, you know, they both have their, their minuses and their pluses. This one has a better sculpt, bad articulation. This one has great articulation and decent sculpt. So, you know, it all depends on which one you prefer. Um, if you're only going to get one, though, I would say get this one. You know, the articulation of, you know, at the end of the day, as long as both of their sculpts are satisfactory, which this one is, um, as long as you have the articulation, this is the one to go with. Moving forward, I also have the uh, Thor the Dark World Marvel Select figure. Um, I got this guy because he came out long before, you know, the uh, Marvel Legends version came out. And uh, this is also a pretty well-made figure, you know. A little thin in the arms, decent head sculpt. You know, and uh, but he has some pretty good articulation. You can actually get him into some pretty nice poses, which is not typical for Marvel Select. You know, and uh, but yeah, this is Marvel Select Thor. I think pretty well made. Um, although unfortunately he's out of date. Um, now that I have this figure, um, I mean obviously I purchased this guy so that I could put him with my Marvel Legends MCU figures. But now that I have this guy, this guy is going to be put away. So that's that. Um, and then I just have a couple of other trinkets here. Oh man, call me Butterfingers, will ya? Uh, this is just a toy. Found this in like a thrift store for like $7 and I said, yeah, I'll get it. I don't know what it's from, but it's a toy. You know, it's a kid's toy. Pretty cool. Nice little addition to the video. This is also a little, <laughs> you know, one of those knockoff dollar store Thors. I don't know what this is, but we were at a thrift store and it was closing down and uh, my girlfriend likes to go to these thrift stores, and I was there with her, of course, and uh, she saw this. She's like, oh, look, I'm getting this for you. And I'm like, really? That's kind of old. And she's like, it's a dollar. I'm getting it for you. So here it is. Pretty cool. And all right, guys, let's move forward. Carrying on, we're taking a look at the uh, Marvel Universe Thor figures that I own. Um, there are lots and lots of... Um, uh, three and three quarter inch Thor figures that are out there. Um, I definitely don't have them all. It's just ones that I have. 
Um, starting here with um, uh, this is the uh, uh, obviously it's a classic Thor, but it came in the um, Jack Kirby, you know, Avengers box set, the first appearance box set, uh, along with Iron Man, Hulk, and um, uh, it was Ant Man and the Wasp, and it's a very nice figure. It's very much representative of that Jack Kirby artwork. Um, I still got my you know little tie on the on the hammer and unfortunately the hammer's warped but it's pretty cool now a lot of the other classic marvel universe stores utilize this body which is just a different head sculpt and um it, it does pretty well the articulation could be a little better um but you know i mean with when it comes to marvel universe or at least three or three quarter inch figures in my opinion it's not as necessary uh for them to be you know super articulated and super you know, detailed. Obviously, the more of each that I can get, the better. But I've always felt three and three quarter inch figures were made more for like a display that has, you know, vehicles and and play sets and whatnot. You're more creating a scene rather than, uh, you know, showing off the beauty of the figure itself. Even though the figures are beautiful, uh, I think six inch figures are more catered to that. So I'm satisfied with them for that matter. Um, with that being said, this figure gave us the best of both worlds. So while I was satisfied with this guy, this guy just blew me out of the park. Uh, or blew me out of the water. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, this is the uh, Heroic Age Modern Thor. And uh, the only thing weird about this guy is that head sculpt. The head sculpt is a little funny looking. Kind of looks like a, uh, I've heard him reference to be a Dutch woman. I think it was Glenn Webb who said that actually, you know, the late, wonderful Glenn Webb. Um, I think he might have actually said that, that this looks like a Dutch woman. <laughs> uh, I could be mistaken though, but this is one of the best Marvel Universe store figures. If not the best Marvel Universe store figure, it's got just amazing detail. The articulation is phenomenal. Um, he displays so nicely in any type of, you know, scene you want to put him in. Um, you even got the inscription. It's not actually written out. I don't believe so. But at least you get that detail on the hammer, you know? So if there's only going to be one Marvel Universe store figure, this is definitely the one to get, unless you want a classic look. Um, and then we have, this is the retail release of the Thor God of Thunder um, um, suit. Uh, this guy was originally released in uh, Comic-Con exclusive. I want to say it was 2011. Could be 2012. I forget. But the Comic-Con version featured him with the helmets, a different paint job and uh, I think maybe some other sculpted details I could be mistaken but this is the retail version of him so I didn't get the comic-con exclusive version one I might still get it but I'm not that big into three and three quarter inch figures I actually have been backtracking and purchasing the ones that I unfortunately sold in the past because back in like 2012 or whatever it was 2011 um, old school collectors will remember Marvel Universe and three and three quarter inch figures were just the bee's knees at that point. You know, they were very popular and they were taking over the industry. I remember a lot of Marvel Legends collectors were getting, including myself, were getting very upset that Hasbro was putting more of their efforts into Marvel Universe when the real love should be put into Marvel Legends, you know? Because that's where most of us, you know, really, really want to focus our collection on. Um, so, but I've actually been backtracking and purchasing a lot of the ones that I used to own. And this is a pretty nice figure too. And then, without a doubt, the best three and three quarter inch Thor action figure anywhere out there, um, especially as far as a classic, um, you know, comic book series goes. This is the Marvel Legends Showdown series Toy Biz Thor. This is literally a Marvel Legend scaled down to three and three quarter inch. Um, the detail in him is just beautiful. The articulation is just phenomenal, and he just completely obliterates all the competition from any of the new Marvel Universe offerings. Um, if you're only going to get one Marvel Universe figure uh, for Thor, or a 3 and 3 quarter inch Thor figure I should say, definitely get this one. This is the best. Got a couple of other ones over here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab them all. These are all Chris Hemsworth uh, 3 and 3 quarter inch figures. Uh, this is him from the Avengers movie line. Pretty nice figure. Does the job well, you know. Here we have Thor the Dark World. A very nice figure underneath this cloak. Unfortunately, his articulation is, you know, 
hindered by the cloak, but this is representative of him, you know, walking around in Asgard wearing this cloak. Um, he does come with his hammer as well. And I've often thought about taking this cloak off and putting a cape on him so I can have, you know, a very nice, um, you know, Dark World Thor with a red cape and whatnot. Uh, this is from the very first movie. Uh, this is not the hammer he comes with. I just, I don't have the, I don't have his hammer, so I just gave him this one. Um, not very well made. You know, the head sculpt was never really that accurate to Chris Hemsworth's likeness. Uh, but it's still kind of cool to have, I guess, you know, like seeing this figure takes me back to, uh, back when the very first Thor movie was coming out, which obviously was a very exciting time for me. And then, oops, lost his hammer. This was, uh, released for Age of Ultron. It's a very basic figure, has five points of articulation. Um, still pretty nice, does the job well. Um, you're not, unfor unfortunately, you're not going to get a lot of articulation out of this guy. But he displays nicely, so that's another Thor figure for you right there. Would you girls please excuse me? Daddy's trying to work here. Next up, we have our larger scale Thor figures. And we're going to start off with my comic book um, related Thors in this scale. So here we have the uh, Marvel Legends Icons Hasbro Thor figure. And for the longest time, this was one of the best Thor figures we've ever gotten. Um, he's not in scale with your Marvel Legends, of course, but he is a Marvel Legend. He's, uh, I want to say, 12 or 13 inches tall, you know? Maybe up to his helmet or so, but he's got amazing detail on him. This is basically uh, for anybody who owns a Frost Giant. This is the same body mold. They reuse his body to put into the Frost Giants, and um, but this Thor just has an amazing look to him. Now, unfortunately, I I picked this guy up late. Um, anybody who who is familiar with Southern California might have heard a place called Frankensons, and I I frequent Frankensons. And I actually purchased this from one of the vendors at Frankenstein's. And unfortunately, the second I tried to, you know, crunch his abs, the fucking thing just broke. <laughs> Excuse my language, you know. But I was so upset that, you know, I was always wanting this figure. And as soon as I get him, he breaks. But aside from that, I was able to super glue it back together. Unfortunately, it's not functional anymore. But um, at least I can display him. And uh, yeah, this is a very, very well-made figure. If you can get your hands on one of this guy, I would highly recommend it. But hopefully yours doesn't break like mine did. Uh, here we go. We have a little bit of a whimsical-looking Thor figure here. This kind of looks like a Barbie doll, doesn't it? So this came out in the Marvel Legends... Ooh, I think it was the Master Art? No, 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 no. It was the Marvel Legends Classic Covers. I'll put a text right here. Um, so, and it's... a. Uh, ironically believe it or not a fun figure to own i love this guy this guy is fun to pose he's got a lot of articulation you know although he feels like a barbie doll you know he feels a little ridiculous he kind of has that classic retro meagle feel to him you know and uh yeah he's just very fun to pose i have i i find myself enjoying this guy a lot more than i thought i would you know he's got the uh the fabrics on he's got the boots and um you know the head sculpt is pretty nice you got to move the hair out of the way but the head sculpt is pretty nice check that out you know and he very much represents that classic jack kirby look so this one you know you might not like it too much i uh, it's definitely not a must get but you know if you have an open mind you might like it now we have our new marvel legends um one six scale thor figure now this guy came out uh relatively recently um i forget exactly what the exact name of it was but it was Marvel Legends taking their stab at, uh, you know, creating 12-inch figures. And it was kind of a hit or a miss, depending on your opinion. Um, I did have fun with them. I thought it was, you know, interesting to get something new. Uh, this figure was very, very well made. Great articulation. The only thing about this guy is that the proportions are just, in my opinion, just bad. Uh, I didn't care for the proportions in this guy. Uh, look at his head. His head is just huge, you know? So, uh, I, I definitely like this 12-inch figure whatever scale it is i definitely like this figure a lot better for this scale this guy though he be better you know as for in terms of articulation um the cape is nice but i think that cape is still a little bit nicer um he might have a little more detail but the proportions just really just ruin it for me i mean he just kind of looks like a short guy you know the big head short arms and short legs this guy you see him he looks like a tall guy so I really wasn't, you know, a fan of the proportions for this guy. However, I did have a lot of fun posing him. I, he is very fun to pose. He's got a lot of good details on him. So 
definitely not a bad figure. You know, if you're interested in this scale, and if you can only get this one, um, you'll be happy. I, I definitely recommend it. So I, 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 even though I just bashed it pretty badly right now, I'd still recommend it. This guy also came with some pretty cool accessories. One cool thing about him is that he has an alternate head sculpt and one thing that we don't see too often is uh, you can actually interchange both the hair and the head. So this helmet doesn't fit so much on you know this hair sculpt. That's why you got this one right here. So you can actually change their head sculpts into the hair and then you can put the helmet on. So you can either have you know a uh, helmet version with the beard or vice versa you know the beard version with the helmet or with the long hair so that's pretty cool and then you also get a uh, kind of like a glowing thunder powered hammer you know which is also pretty cool and you also get a couple of alternate hands uh, some hands are open some hands are closed and you can you know use your own discretion to display them however you want but yeah so pretty cool accessories with this guy Next up we have my Hot Toys stores. Now there are a lot of Hot Toys stores out there. Unfortunately these are the only two that I have. Um, Hot Toys are without a doubt, you know, very expensive and um, unfortunately they're, they're also kind of fragile. Um, I don't like messing around with these guys too often, which is why I'm holding a camera for this segment. I don't want to pick them up and mess around with them because um, I do have a couple of other Hot Toys and a couple of pieces have broken. But taking a look at these guys, Hot Toys are just beautiful figures. Anyone who's familiar with Hot Toys out there know that they hit it out of the park almost every single time. And uh, these figures are no exception. Um, this guy, I wish his shoulders and chest were a little more broader. That seems to be a reoccurring case with a lot of the Thor figures that, you know, come out. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful figure. I have this one. This is the Age of Ultron Thor. And I have him because this is my favorite look for Thor. Um, aside from the armored version, which I used to have. I used to have the, uh, the heavy armor version of this character as well in this suit. Uh, but yeah, beautiful head sculpt. Absolutely amazing figure. And then next up we have the Avengers 1 2012 Thor. Um, this guy, now he has broad shoulders and a broad chest. Um, another, another, another very well made figure. Absolutely incredible. And this guy actually has the suit from Avengers 2012. Now, like I mentioned in uh, earlier in this video, this Thor is supposed to be the 2012 movie Thor. He's actually wearing the suit that he wore in the first movie, in the first Thor movie. This is the uh, 2011 movie Thor. And you can see the differences. So you can see the differences in the boots, the, uh, the legs, you know, the spikes at the very top of the armor. And of course his gauntlets as well. So it's just a couple of slight differences, but something that a guy like me would notice. And I'd really love to get this guy made in uh, Marvel Legends. Kind of unlikely, but hey, a guy can dream, you know? So yeah, those are my two Hot Toys store. Love these guys, they're both incredible. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend them. And now for our last segment featuring the Thunder God. Um, we have a random assortment of some gifts and some retro figures that I own. Um, starting off with this guy, he's a very old figure, came out in the 90s and uh, uh, utilizes some chrome right here on the chest. Chrome was very popular in the 90s and uh, kind of an outdated basic figure but you know, um, still displays very very nicely. This is not the hammer he came with, this is a Marvel Select hammer. Um, and then we'll just put him off to the side right there for now. Uh, over here we have another retro figure, also came out in the 90s in a box set featuring the classic Avengers, Hulk, Iron Man, Giant Man and such. Uh, he also utilizes the chrome, has a very fluffy, you know, uh, cape to him. Very nice hammer, the hammer actually looks really, really nice. You got the full inscription on this guy, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, also another, you know, cool figure to have. Um, I got a couple of Funkos, I'm not a Funko Pop collector at all, but I'll take some gifts that people give me. Uh, these are all gifts, you know, Disney Store Thor, this is uh, the Slurpee Thor that we got. He's actually a cup and you can open him up and drink from him. Uh, a couple of other, you know, that's a piggy bank, that's another toy right there. And the last one that I want to look at is my oldest Thor figure. Now, this is not the first Thor I ever owned, but it is the most classic Thor I own. This guy came out in the original Toy Biz run of Marvel figures. Uh, so that new retro line that Marvel Legends is putting out, it's based off of this line. And this figure just feels so cool to own. Very outdated, very, you know, old and retro, but still very, very cool. And alright my fellow Asgardians, that's going to do it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this content. It's, uh, it's fun to make it, and you know, I've been, I'm very happy to say that I've been very pleased with 
the response that I've gotten of coming back to YouTube and sharing videos and being a part of the community one more time. Um, so it's a great community to be a part of and overall it's just great to be back. So feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, you know, do whatever you guys want to do. And uh, of course we are still in quarantine so be safe, take care out there. And uh, before we all know it we're going to be once again out there congregating at the old taverns and you know celebrating with revels so yeah let's just be safe guys let's get through this and once again thank you so much for checking out the video and uh everyone stay mighty take care you guys